Hey guys, this is Malcolm from Automotive Addicts. Bringing you another car today. Today is different because I'm bringing you actually one of my cars I dug out of the garage, believe it or not. This one has been sitting in the garage for some time. It's our 2009 Infiniti FX50. Now, a lot of people might remember this car, seeing them on the road many times when they first came out in 2009 for this body style. Now, previously they were known as the FX35, FX45, then they went on to the FX35, FX50, and the recent ones, which were recently discontinued, were the QX70. Now, our FX50 has been in the family for about 10 years now. It is a aging car, 11 years old. However, this has actually been like the best car as far as reliability that I've ever owned. It uh, was a car my wife drove many times when we got it but as a new car. It's pretty much stood the test of time. Now, what's unique about this car is it has a 5.0 liter V8 that's only found in this car. Now, as many enthusiasts know, this vehicle was built off of the Z platform, the 370Z, the 350Z platform, rear wheel drive base vehicle. This one is all wheel drive. All the FX50s when they came out were all wheel drive vehicles. This one is loaded up, has plenty of features. And uh, this reminds me of the time when Infinity was really doing something where I thought the brand was significant. Any of you watch uh, Doug, Doug DeMiro's video on Infinity as far as them possibly being a dying breed, which I wholeheartedly agree with, which is kind of unfortunate. But when this vehicle came out, it was something I thought was very special. I bought for the family. Um, it's been our family vehicle for quite some time. Uh, we replaced it about a year or so ago with another car for the family vehicle. But uh, I'll just take you for a quick spin inside, show you some of the features that uh, were kind of innovative for the time when the Infinity came out. With, with this particular car but quickly for starters this one does have adaptive cruise control there's a radar down here at the bottom if you can see it has the 360 degree view camera system which was pretty innovative for that time period you know being uh, 11 years ago other performance features is you got four piston calipers up front for the brakes these are 21 inch wheels 265 patch squared up all four corners and dual piston calipers out back for the brakes it is quite of a performer this car when it came out it was you know running against the Porsche Cayenne BMW X5 wasn't quite the level of the BMW X5 M however 390 horsepower 369 pound-feet of torque from this V8 engine but with that, it is quite of a gas guzzler. Uh, 20 miles per gallon on the highway, 14 on, in the city. But uh, during our time with it, we've actually bettered those numbers for the most part. The vehicle is pretty much stock. Uh, the only issue I've had with it was the starter throughout its 11 years, which is I think is a pretty good, pretty good bet. They built these things pretty well. Built in Japan, of course. It is kind of a shame I haven't driven this vehicle um, admittedly probably four, six months. It's been sitting in the garage. This is the 5.0 liter V8 engine. Now it's not to be confused with like the 5.6 and found in the other Infinities, the V8 found in like the QX80. But enough about that, I'll go ahead and hop in and take you for a quick ride and show you the inside of the car and it's in pretty good shape from what I think. Now our FX50, is somewhat unique it has this uh like a coffee colored in uh, leather interior perforated seats they are heated and ventilated which was like again another feature from that time that was pretty uh forward thinking out back there's not that much space once again I, this car is, is built off of a z platform like i said before the nissan the 370z the 350z it was never a really big vehicle it is considered mid-sized. And the 2000 model is actually before the power lift gates. So it is a manual lift gate. Cargo room is so-so. Like I said, it's, you know, being built off of that Z platform, there wasn't much to work with as far as, you know, adding extra room, extra cargo space. 
So this is our old Infiniti FX50, it's 2009. Once again, you know, 11 year old car, it's pretty much stood the test of time. Now my humble opinion of the Infiniti FX, when it originally came out, I thought it was groundbreaking as far as being a luxury, sporty crossover vehicle. And this one, when they did the redesign in 2009 for this, this particular model that we're in, it was more forward thinking, I think, for the Infiniti brand. It was rather some breakthroughs. Like I said, this car has adaptive cruise control, lane, lane departure mitigation, lane, lane departure warning. It even has a uh, distance control assist system that if you turn on and basically you don't have to use the brake pedal ever, the car will slow down as you approach a vehicle in front of you. Other features that were notable for that time was the 360 degree view camera system, the backup camera, which you find pretty common in luxury vehicles and even some mainstream vehicles. But I think Infiniti was really on a roll when this car came out and if, you know, a few years afterwards. This one does have the seven speed automatic transmission. Doesn't have any of that CVT garbage, of course, which I'm sorry for calling it garbage, but I call it what it is. I'm more of a, as you probably get to see some of my other videos, um, I'm really into performance vehicles. You know, I could have easily picked up a X5M at the time. Of course, it costs quite a bit more than this one. This one, list price was just over, it was about $65,000, $66,000 for this vehicle. Fully loaded. Only thing that this one didn't have was the entertainment system, which was the uh, the um, DVD screen mounted in the ceiling. Now, building this off of the Z platform, I thought that was a remarkable step as far as having something performance-oriented in a crossover vehicle. And like I said, the FX rear-wheel drive vehicle, this one is all-wheel drive, still rear-wheel rear drive biased. It does handle well. The steering is exceptionally tight. Uh, it's a heavy steering rack on the vehicle. It does have a very sharp initial tip in for the acceleration gas pedal is very sensitive in this car but that's the joy of having this naturally aspirated 5.0 liter v8 in this car it has a nice rumble in the exhaust nothing i don't think anything else sounds like this vehicle it's pretty unique in itself it's different from that 5.6 you find in the the big qx80 infinity suv so like i said every car that i drive i will do a 0 to 60 test and see if you can hold a conversation throughout it this one I can somewhat hold a conversation. I'm not gonna brag about how fast the vehicle is. Zero to 60 in about 5.4 seconds. It's nothing to take your breath away, but it's not a slouch. It's not slow in any means. And like I said, that's one of the, the selling factors of when I saw this car, you know, I was like, wow, it comes with a V8. You know, how many crossover uh, utility vehicles at that time, mid-sized luxury ones that you could get with a V8, except if you go the AMG route or the BMW X5M route or the Porsche Cayenne. But I will just go ahead and do a 0 to 60 real quick. And 60. But, yeah, it's, it's a decent performer. It rides kind of rough. Uh, the 21-inch wheels on here don't do it any justice. It does have adaptive dampers. And actually, it does have rear wheel steering. The rear wheels do steer at about a 1 degree angle either direction. Uh, when you're doing lower speeds, it steers the opposite direction for a tighter turn. When you get up to highway speeds, it turns at the same direction. Like I said, some of those things are forward-thinking things that Infinity brand had at the time. Very unfortunate now that Infinity doesn't have much out there to really bring people into the showroom to see what they have as far as forward-thinking stuff. Most of their products, which isn't that many at the moment, don't have really thing, anything that really thrills people or impresses them. Uh, I think the only thing they might have that really impresses me at the moment is the Q50 Red Sport, which is the 400 horsepower uh, twin turbo V6 engine. That one, it's a nice engine. So, some of the some of the controls, of course, as you can see, are customary Infinity stuff, Nissan on the touchscreen. It's a slightly lower resolution from what you find now, but believe it or not, Infinity still uses a variation of that screen for that dual screen setup they have, which is kind of quirky, but. It is what it is. For that time, it's something, I think, forward thinking for Infinity for the brand at that time, like I said earlier. Other notable things are the HID headlights. They do swivel with the steering wheel, adaptive headlights. The ride is is uh, very firm. Um, it's it's That, I think, is very assuring for the handling of the vehicle. It, it doesn't slide around much. If you do get out of, out of the line, the traction control and stability control will step in. It'll actually tighten up the seat belts, it'll grab you pretty hard actually. 
but for a, somewhat of a rare vehicle, a lot of people don't know about the FX50 during this time, which of course the name change turned into the QX70 at the moment, and they continued to make the V8 a little bit after the, the name change, but they did discontinue the vehicle a few years back, which is a shame because I mean, it's a fun vehicle. I think it would do well in, in the sales market right now. And if Infinity took it and redesigned it into something better than what the QX50 is, I think they would have more people going into the showroom to see other products. But overall, it's a great car. Actually, I'm gonna probably put it back on the market just to sell it, get it out um, of one of my garages. It's taking up space at the moment. I hardly ever drive this thing. It's been about four to six months since I've driven it. Um, actually, I had to knock off a few spider webs, I'll embarrassingly admit. But, great car. Maybe if Infinity wants to survive, and hopefully they will, not, not, not continually bashing the company. It's great, you know, they have great vehicles like this. You know, hopefully they will be inspired to be more forward thinking like they used to be. Um, this vehicle, as far as a luxury, crossover vehicle was I think somewhat luxurious at the time it has soft touch everywhere there are no hard plastics hardly um, nice wood trim build quality is great like I said there's zero issues with the car during its life except for the starter and even that was something that probably didn't have to be replaced at the time it just you know hicked up on a couple starts you know throughout a week and then kind of subsided after that but we went ahead and got it replaced but overall, it's been a great vehicle. 137,000 miles on it. Tip-top shape. Everything works. No real big complaints. Other than it not having a true USB port. Funny enough, the 2009s did not have an actual USB port. It had a proprietary port for your iPod hookup and your iPhone hookup, which you had to buy adapters for. But the 2010 model that came out or the year after actually did have a USB port. One of those quirky things about Infinity, I guess, at the time. People were slowly starting to roll out USB ports at the time anyway. And like I said, I might put it on the market for sale and I'll probably show this video to, you know, potential buyers. Anybody wants to buy it, let me know. Reach me, comment. But uh, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.